Good morning, friends. I feel immense pleasure to be here for my course, Aircraft Stability and Control. Today, it's my lecture, which is related to questions and answer of, and it is a dynamic stability. I am Dr. Y. D. Duvedi, Professor from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad, India. Hope you all have understood something from my lecture. I have completed most of the topic for aircraft stability and control, and I am in last phase of this lecture. In today's lecture, the lecture overviews are as given. Following topics to be covered in this lecture. First, I will start with monkey bath for aircraft stability, in which I am going to revisit the initial chapters. Then, introduction to few aircraft with different roles. Aircraft dynamic stability, aircraft dynamic modes, longitudinal modes. In this, we have the forward modes, short period, and oscillation. Also, we have the lateral and directional modes. In that, I am going to cover about roll, Dutch roll, and spiral divergence. This, these things are not mentioned here, but I will be covering those lateral and directional modes also. I am starting with my thought on this course, Aircraft Stability and Control. I have started from my module 1, that is Aircraft Longitudinal Static Stability. In this, we have understood that once the aircraft is disturbed longitudinally or when aircraft is disturbed from the vertical axis in this plane, if you see here, these are the aircraft. If aircraft is flying like this, wind will come from this direction. If the wind is coming from the bottom, that is alpha change. So this aircraft nose will disturb. If after this removing of this force, the tendency of this aircraft is to come to its equilibrium position or the initial condition from where it was disturbed. Here we are in static stability, we are only discussing about the tendency of the aircraft or the tendency of the object, whether it is trying to come to its equilibrium position or not. If it is trying to come to its equilibrium position, we can say that aircraft is longitudinal static stable once the angle of attack is changed. Here we can say that if angle, the air is coming from this direction, this is the angle of attack here, which you can see. This angle of attack, as you increase, the forces developed by this aircraft will also increase. The stability is dependent upon the location of the center of gravity and the aerodynamic center. Just I will draw one aircraft and then I will show you how this thing can be done. If this is the aircraft, this is the wing, here we have the tail, I am showing only one side. The, the main wing of the aircraft, the aerodynamic center is here, this is the A AC line and this is here AC, aerodynamic center. And if CG is behind the AC, this is the CG, the lift which will act in this direction, lift into this distance, a moment will act in clockwise direction and this lift into distance CG. And this moment will be in clockwise direction, positive, but this is the tendency. In this case, the aircraft will not come to its equilibrium position, but it will go away from its equilibrium position. The tendency of the aircraft is not to revert to reach again in this condition. So how to make it? So how to make the aircraft statically longitudinal stable? We need a tail. This is called the horizontal tail. This is the horizontal tail. This horizontal tail has to generate a force. This is the AC of this. This I am writing here LT. The lift force generated in this direction into this small xt. So, this lt and 
So this moment generated by this horizontal tail will be Lt into Xt. This should be equal to the L into Cg. Or here I can write L into Xcg. If these things are equal, then aircraft is stable. We can say that if we increase a little amount of this, the tendency of the aircraft will be towards the nose down. So, if the aircraft tendency is towards the nose down, we can say that aircraft is longitudinal static stable. However, if you see in this, we have drawn here plot CM versus alpha for the longitudinal static stability. You can see here that as you increase the angle of attack, we have here three plots. One plot is this, number one. Second plot is here, number two. Third plot is number three. Which one is? Which one is statically stable? This is the first question. Which one is statically stable? So to have the static stability, we should have we should meet these two conditions. First one is CM alpha should be less than zero. Means as you increase the angle of attack, the CM should decrease. And the second condition is CM not at zero angle of attack, it should be positive. CM should be positive. So if you see here the case one, this is the CM not for case one. CM not for case one. So if you see, this is the negative. So first condition, it is not meeting this CM naught. If you take this second case, this one, here, if you see, this is also CM naught is negative. So it is not meeting. And also, if you increase the angle of attack here for this case one, CM alpha is increasing. CM alpha is increasing. So this is also not meeting. CM alpha should be less than zero. So, case 1 and 2, both are unstable. So, we have to see now case 3. Case 3, first we have to see that CM0 is equal to greater than 0, positive. So, here you can see here CM0 is greater than 0. This value from here to here, it is a positive. So, th this condition is meeting. Second condition is CM alpha. As you increase the angle of attack, it should decrease. So, you see here. At the zero, you have the maximum, and as you increase angle of attack, it is falling down. So, case three or the plot number three is longitudinal static step. So, in in this way, if the plots are given, we can find out that whether the aircraft is statically stable or is statically longitudinal unstable or whatever is there, these two conditions has to be met. If we are able to meet these two conditions, we can say that aircraft is longitudinal static stable. Now I will come for the second case, aircraft lateral and directional static stability. So here, if you see first the lateral stability, lateral means roll. This you can see here, if the aircraft is going like this, and if the right wing is going down with respect to x-axis or the longitudinal axis, this. So, if you are rolling right being down, so what will happen? Due to this rolling of this thing, the lift vector will also roll towards the right wing. So, this lift vector will have the two component. One is horizontal, one is a vertical. Vertical component will counter the weight of the aircraft and the horizontal will start drifting the aircraft towards the rolling side. This drifting of the aircraft will generate a side slip angle beta. Flow will start from this side. This flow will hit the vertical fin. And also, there is a difference of relative velocity in the right wing and the left wing. So the wing also and the, the horizontal, this vertical tail also will try to roll back the aircraft again. The tendency of this, if you remove this drift, this right wing, the forces will act more in this, it will try to make like this and here also a side force will generate in this direction and it will try to move in this direction. So you have given like this, but due to the side force, 
due to the side slip angle this will try to move like this so it is a stable case so for the stable case a opposite force should act if it is going towards the right it should make aircraft upward like this so for this the cl should be less than cl beta should be less than 0 so you have to draw like this this is the stable case stable case means as you increase the beta cl should decrease this is the case for the lateral stability and i have shown you two cases two components that is the wing and the vertical tail or fin these two are playing very important role to make its lateral stable now i talk about the directional stable direction means once aircraft is flying like this and if you a side force a side wind came from this side it is called the side slip a side slip angle is generated this side slip will make the aircraft turn in this direction because here a y force will act in this direction so it will try to neutralize the beta so as it is positive it is also moving towards the positive so aircraft will be the plot will be like this so here the cn beta should be greater than zero it means for the directional static stability as you increase the side slip angle beta 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 the cn should also increase in the same proportionate you see here like this if it is increasing with increase on the beta it is a positive value then we can say that we can say that aircraft is directional stable about static we are talking about here static only okay so these are the few my concept which we have discussed now i am going to go ahead with some today's topic about dynamic stability so here i will go for the aircraft dynamics of boeing 777 i have taken few aircrafts name and their drawing which will give us some some thought about aircraft stability we can see here that this is the boeing 777 is a wide body airline developed and manufactured by boeing commercial airplanes commonly referred to as the 777 the 777 was designed to bridge the gap between 767 and 747 so in 767 and going 747 there was some uh, very uh, imminent gap this gap has to be filled to fill these gaps boeing has developed the 777 and this is the diagram of the 777 777 has got the two turbofan engines with here bogey it is called the bogey landing gear bogey type landing gear this you can see here these are the engines intake this is the fuselage here these are the wings you can see the wings are sweep back wings have given the sweep back and if you see about the vertical tail vertical tail is also a little sweep back if you see about the horizontal tail the horizontal tail is also a little sweep back all the sweep backs plays very important role for the aircraft stability and it is also very much essential that a certain amount of sweep in wing horizontal tail and vertical fin are given so that the stability of the aircraft in static stability as well as in dynamic stability of the aircraft is improved so that this aircraft is designed in so that the a suitable aircraft stability in directional lateral longitudinal as well as in dynamic stability of the aircraft is well maintained within the safety margin of the aircraft next i am going to talk about the aircraft dynamics of fa18 super hornet this aircraft is made by the us 
एफ ए एटीन हॉर्नेट इज ए ट्विन इंजन सुपरसोनिक ऑल वेदर कैरियर कैपेबल मल्टी रोल कैम्बेट जेट डिजाइन एज बोथ फाइटर एंड अटैक एयरक्राफ्ट सो दिस एयरक्राफ्ट इज वेल नोन फॉर द पीपुल एंड दिस एयरक्राफ्ट इज यूज फॉर यूएस नेवी ब्रिटिश नेवी एंड सो मेनी अदर कंट्रीज आर यूजिंग दिस एयरक्राफ्ट एंड it is all weather all type of weather rain thunder or any type of weather very cold or very hot it can be used it can be also used on board the ship carrier capable multi role combat aircraft designed as a both fighter and attack aircraft so it is used for the both purpose you can see here that here we have the twin vertical fin here we have the sweep horizontal tail swept horizontal tail here also we have the swept wing okay and if you see the body of the aircraft is also very sharp and it gives here the cockpit pilot is accommodated here and it is one of the best aircraft especially for dynamic stability part of the aircraft so that it is achieving a very good maneuver with a safety margin given a respective safety margin now this aircraft is nasa space shuttle aircraft this aircraft the space shuttle is partially this reusable low earth orbit spacecraft system that was operated from 1981 to 2011 by the us national aeronautics and space administration nasa as part of the space shuttle program so in this space shuttle so many flights have been completed but after 2011 this shuttle was not used due to some its technical issues and some accidents have taken place so they have abandoned this program and they have now started some other this aircraft is very good for outer space as well as for the in space you can see here this is the flight controls here in this and twin engine this can be used for mission carrying the astronaut from earth to the space orbit now a simple general aviation aircraft we can see here a lot of difference is there and it is a cherokee piper cherokee so the piper pa28 cherokee is a family of two seat or four seat light aircraft built by piper aircraft and designed for fighting fight training flight training air taxi and personal use so it is used for flight training initial training of the pilot air taxi services and personal use for transportation of passengers from one place to another place only for emergency need for medicine medical and other requirement the pa28 family of aircraft comprises all metal so it is a full metal aluminum alloys are used it is unpressurized so it cannot go a very high altitude single engine aircraft piston powered so the engine is single and also it is a piston engine airplane with low mounted wing i think you may be remembering that my module 1 i have discussed that the low mounting wing gives the less longitudinal stable however if you make a little dihedral it can work and it can give a better stability of the aircraft and it has got the tricycle one is at the nose and two are at the wing so here this is called the one two and another is in this wing so we have three landing gears or three wheels so it is called a tricycle landing gear here we have the th three so it is called the tricycle landing gear this you, you can see one is in one wing another is another wing and this is at the nose so th this type of aircraft a very simple aircraft but it is very much useful used for so many general aviation purpose like uh, medicine emergencies search and rescues uh, agriculture tourist uh, 
लीजर इंजॉयमेंट इंटरटेनमेंट ऑल दिस पर्पज दिस एयरक्राफ्ट आर यूज एंड इट इज वेरी मच पॉपुलर ओके दिस एयरक्राफ्ट नाउ दिस इज अन ऑफ द वेरी रिसर्च एयरक्राफ्ट नासा एक्स ट्वेंटी नाइन द नेम वॉज गिवेन नासा एक्स ट्वेंटी नाइन the role of this aircraft is experimental aircraft nation of origin is united states manufacturer is grumen first flight in 1984 status is retired primary user united states air force nasa number of built aircraft only two aircrafts are built till now so this has got some basic issues so that this aircraft was abandoned x29 was an experimental aircraft that tested a forward swept wing canard control surfaces developed by grumen and that two built were flown by nasa and the united states air force the aerodynamic instability of x29 airframe required the use of computerized fly by wire control composite materials were used to control the aeroelastic divergent twisting experienced by forward swept wing and to reduce weight okay so it was very advanced version so in this fly by wire system was used second it was the problem was the aeroelastic divergent twisting of the wing forward swept wing and to reduce the weight so you can see here the wing are forward twisted here this you can see so it is going forward like this and here we have the canard here so the problem was there it is uh, twisting the wing wind wing was very much twisting due to the aeroelastic issues so it was abandoned and uh, uh, only two aircrafts were built only for demonstration purpose uh, the company was grumen now what is the aircraft dynamic stability now i have to go for the my topic of last module 5 in this we have to discuss about aircraft dynamic stability so what is the dynamic stability and how it is uh, working so aircraft dynamic stability focuses on the time history of aircraft motion after the aircraft is disturbed from an equilibrium or trim condition so in this what happened the time history is very important so if we disturb the aircraft and we should see that how much time it is taking for coming to its equilibrium position just i will give a small demonstration for dynamic stability and what is the difference between a dynamic stability and static stability so if it is aircraft is flying and all of a sudden some gust came gust is hit this aircraft has gone like this and after this what happened if aircraft is statically stable first to have the dynamic stability we should make sure that aircraft is statically stable if aircraft is static stable then only dynamic stability will persist otherwise diamond this dynamic stability cannot be achieved if it is not statically stable so if a gust of wind came and it is hit like this and all of a sudden this wind has gone there is no wind now that disturbing forces have eliminated so what will happen to the aircraft if it is static stable the tendency of this aircraft to come to its equilibrium position as it was flying so to have the dynamic stability we should have first static stable means the tendency of the aircraft to be coming to its equilibrium position if it is not the tendency not persist dynamic stability will not exist okay so it is made like this and if it is stable it will come to its equilibrium position but it is a static stable to to understand the dynamic stable we should see that there is a this motion may be first order that is called exponential response or the second order oscillatory response so we can see that if aircraft is like this it has come and in a one go it is come and it start going then it is it is a first order exponential response but mostly it is not happen it is disturbed it will go like this and it will coming like this like this and after some time it will come to its equilibrium position means it will have oscillation if the oscillations are there it means this is a second order oscillation response so in in dynamic case we have to 
first see that whether it is a first order means after disturbance immediately after some time it is coming to equilibrium position or it is going like this like this slowly it is coming to the equilibrium position that we have to understand very well we have either positive dynamic stability that is aircraft return to the trim condition as time goes to infinity or we have the neutral dynamic stability that is aircraft returns to trim nor diverges further from the distal position. So if you see here the dynamic instability that is aircraft diverges from the trim condition and the disturbed condition as time goes to infinity. The study of dynamic stability is important to understand the aircraft handling quality and the design features that make an airplane fly well or not as well while performing a specific mission. So I am drawing here, this is the time and this is the amplitude, aircraft is here. This is the aircraft and if the wind came from this direction, aircraft is disturbed up to here. After removal of this wind, whether it is coming like this, that is the first order. But if it is going like this, this is the oscillatory, oscillatory and this is the second order. Okay, so this is the stable case. But if you disturb the aircraft, if you disturb the aircraft, it is going like this, continue same amplitude with the time passes. It is called the neutral dynamic stability. And the third case is dynamic instability. After disturbance, the amplitude is increasing, continue increasing like this, like this. So with the passing of the time, it is not coming to its equilibrium position. We can say that aircraft is dynamic instable. This dynamic stability is very important because it gives a aircraft handling quality and the design feature so that the passengers and the pilot will get a very safe environment. They will not get a very high vibration inside the aircraft and their uh, journey will be very comfortable as well as the equipments, those who are on board this, including engines, avionics and all, they will not experience a much vibration. So their safety will be ensured if we make the aircraft dynamic step. Now I am going for the next question. What are the aircraft dynamic modes? So we have learned now that what is the dynamic stability? So dynamic stability means with respect to the time, if amplitudes are in, uh, decreasing, we can say that aircraft is dynamic stable. In dynamic stable, we have the two cases. So one is the longitudinal modes and another is the lateral or directional modes. So in longitudinal modes, we have the fugoid or the longer period oscillation and another is the short period oscillation. So I will just give a small this thing. Fugoid means long period, means it takes a lot of time to come to its equilibrium position. So if it is disturbed like this and it is slowly, 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 it will take many seconds, 20 seconds like this to come to its equilibrium position. This is called the fugoid or long period oscillation. In short period, if it is disturbed like this, like this, if it is, again I am telling, if it is disturbed by something, immediately it will respond like this and it will come. Within friction of second, it will come to its equilibrium position. This type of called the short period oscillation. Very, very less time, less than one second, it will come to its equilibrium. But for the fugoid or long period oscillation, it will take continuous motion with a long time and long distance it will travel, then only it will reach to the equilibrium position. Once we talk about the lateral and directional mode, so uh, this uh, in longitudinal mode, what will happen? A vertical motion of nose will be there, but in lateral and directional, rolling and yawing, two will be combine, combined. So if you make the roll, so raw, it is called the roll subsidence mode. 
another is called the dutch roll another is dutch roll and third one is spiral divergence so these three modes are in the lateral directional dynamic stable p mode i will be discussing in one by one in my next slides so what are the longitudinal modes these are the this is the question so oscillating motion can be described by two parameters number a the period of time required for one complete oscillation b the time required to damp to half amplitude third the time to double the amplitude a dynamically unstable motion okay so this oscillating motion we can make said make sure that the period of time required for one how much time time period required for the one oscillation going coming again going. this is how much time is there then second is the how much time to damp half of amplitude means it is going upward like this so it is going like this and then half it is now half here how much time this is the time so how much time required to make the aircraft half amplitude this is for the stable case third case is if i make like this it will go like this like this double how much time it is doubling you see here this is the t1 and from here t2 this is here doubling so if double means it is a dynamically unstable or dynamically instable motions are there so the longitudinal motion consists of two distinct oscillations so long period oscillation called a fuboid mode and the short period oscillations referred as a the short period mode so we, in the longitudinal case we have the two modes that is the first one is the long period oscillation it means it is taking more time to come to its equilibrium and the second case is the short period oscillation referred as the short period mode so these are the two cases here i have given some diagram here this you can see here the fuboid mode that is called the long period oscillation mode it has less damped oscillation and is oscillation period is very high and it gains its initial position in a long range fuboid has the smallest imaginary part okay so here this you can see here it is going upward coming down again going again coming so like this it is coming okay here this you can see the same thing aircraft climbs when lift is greater than weight okay how this step by step it is shown here as it is reaching here if the lift is higher than the weight it will go up decreasing speed causes plane to stall so lift becomes less so due to this high lift it will go up but the angle of attack will increase and here aircraft will stall due to stalling of the aircraft it will come down again it will go like this again here the loss of lift causes plane to descent but speed increases so here as it is going down due to the less lift the velocity of the aircraft is increases this velocity of increase again here increasing speed gives plane enough lift to pull it nose up so uh, again it is going down so like this fuboid mode will operate i think it is very much clear how these things are happening so here lift and the this velocity if it is going here to top the lift will be highest stall will happen now the velocity will be minimum so it will start decreasing due to this gravitational speed will start increasing but here again speed is very less lift is again increased and again it will climb so like this aircraft will go up and down and this is called the fuboid now here this you can see in this diagram if it is a damp the it will go like this up one case up to here but if it is a damp it will not go here but slowly slowly it will come to its equilibrium position but here lightly damp if it is a lightly damp 
it will take long time and this is the foveate and this is the short period very short period in even one go it has come to its equilibrium position so foveate is a long period long period and this is a short period short period mode so these are the two modes which are very much essential to understand by the flight dynamic people now what is foveate mode foveate mode is the one in which there is a large amplitude variation of air speed pitch angle and altitude but almost no angle of attack variation in this what happened angle of attack is mostly constant only the variation of speed pitch angle and altitude this height pitch angle and air speed will vary however angle of attack will not vary due to the variation of air speed and all the lift will increase or decrease as the aircraft will go up and down the fugue to acceleration is really a slow interchange of kinetic energy means velocity and the potential energy height so in this kinetic energy will change to potential energy and potential energy will change to kinetic energy if you see here if you start from here here it's k is high as it is reached to here potential energy is high again it is going like this again k again p like this it will happen and slowly slowly it will come down so here the energy transformation take place in this case the motion is so slow that the effect of inertia forces and damping forces are very slow so the motion is so slow that the effect of inertia forces and the damping forces are very low okay so here the inertia forces and the damping forces are very low although the damping is weak the period is so long that the pilot usually corrects for this motion without being aware that the oscillation even exists so in this it is very slow so pilot will adjust himself without any use of any additional devices typically the period is 20 to 60 second this oscillation can generally be controlled by the pilot so this foveate mode is very clearly seen and pilot will experience and pilot will try to control by help of the uh, different controls available in the aircraft foveate is an aircraft motion in which the vehicle pitches up and climb and then pitches down and descent accompanied by speed up and slowing down as it goes up and down okay so in this we can see that here the aircraft is state and level flight as nos going up up to here the velocity is increased now here the velocity is low it will pitch down and like this aircraft will move like this like this like this like this and it is 20 to 60 seconds long time okay incidents some previous incidents happened in 1975 us air force c5 flight control damaged 153 died 1985 japan airlines 520 death in 2009 airbus 320 212 landed in hudson river so these are the few important accident which took place due to the foveate mode and which could not be controlled by the pilot and this things can happen to any of the aircraft now i will talk about the next longitudinal mode that is called the short period oscillation so the short period mode is usually heavily damped oscillation so in in, in this what happened oh, what is the meaning of short period aircraft is flying due to some gust it has come like this it will do like this shortly immediately like this and it will come to its within a fraction of second lot of vibrations and it will come to the equilibrium position that is called the short period the short period mode is usually heavily damped oscillation with a period of only a few seconds maybe 1 2 or 3 seconds maximum the motion is a rapid pitching of the aircraft about the uh, center of gravity means rapid like this 
very fast with the center of gravity. The period is so short that the speed does not have time to change. In this speed we will not change. In the, in the forward mode, speed will vary. So the oscillation is essentially an angle of attack variation. So in this oscillation will take place. In this angle of attack will change. However, in the forward angle of attack will remain constant. The velocity of the aircraft will change. The time to damp the amplitude to one half of its value is usually on the order of one second. So in one second, it is damped out. Ability to quickly self damp when the stick is briefly displaced is one of the many criteria for general aircraft certification. So during certification, how much fast it is damping by putting the stick, the control stick forward or aft, within a one go, it should come to its equilibrium position. Then we can say that aircraft is statically, uh, aircraft is dynamic stable in short period of oscillation. Okay, now I will talk about the lateral directional dynamic stability. So till now we have completed the longitudinal uh, dynamic stability and we have seen that there are two modes that is called the first one is the forward mode or the long period mode and second is the short period mode but here in the lateral and directional static stability we have the three modes one is the roll another is spiral third one is the touch roll so these are the three roles i will be discussing in shortly in this few slides so roll, well damped, not oscillatory. So the first case is roll. It is a well damped, but it is not oscillatory. Okay, so if you see here, if aircraft is flying like this, you roll. So the rolling means starboard side increases its incidence, means the angle of attack of this roll down. If you can see in this air, uh, okay, so roll down. So this side will have more angle of attack. This side will have less angle of attack. So aircraft has rolled down in this direction. Moment is in the clockwise. A mo this moment will generate anti-clockwise. So it is a well damped, not oxidate. So it will immediately, it will come like this. There will not be any much disturbance. Immediately it will come. It will not do like this, like this. Okay. So roll subsidence mode, it is also called the Roll subsidence, subsidence mode is simply the damping of rolling motion. There is a no direct aerodynamic moment creates tending to directly restore wing level. That is, there is, there is in returning spring force moment proportional to the roll angle. However, there is a damping moment proportional to the roll rate created by the sleeving about the uh, of long wing. This prevents large roll rates building up when roll control inputs are made or it damps the roll rate to zero when there are no roll control inputs. Roll modes can be improved by dihedral effect from design characteristics such as high wing dihedral angles or sweep angles. This you can uh, see here that if you want to make the roll dynamic stability, it is not oscillatory, it is a first order. It means it is rolled down, just you can see here it is rolled down, there will be a increase in incidence in this side, this much and here it is decreased, this much it is decreased. So here a lift force will act like this and it will try to move again, it is disturbed like this. And here it will be less, it will push like this. So in a one go, it will come back to again to its stable in this condition, straight and level five. So this is called the roll subsidence and this is a dynamic case, but it is a first order dynamic case. There is no oscillation. It is immediately it is coming to its equilibrium position in a certain amount of very less time. So that is why it is starboard wing means right wing down and port wing means left wing and this left wing will experience a reduction in the incidence angle and the right wing or starboard starboard 
wing will increase the incidence and this type of action is called the role and this is known as the role subsidence mode means the role which is got it should be recovered without any disturbance and there is no oxidation in one go it is di disturbed like this and one go it has come to its equilibrium it will not go other side that is the and it can be improved by the design characteristics like high wing if you have the high wing aircraft if you have the low wing you have to introduce a dihedral just like it is given in this aircraft some dihedral angles are given or the sweep if you have the sweep like this which you can see this aircraft has the sweep angle this is the sweep angle it is shown here here also so the sweep angle okay in this wing it is the only the sweep angle is given it is not the high wing also and this is having little dihedral so dihedral it means from horizontal how much angle this is the angle which gives the dihedral angle so if you have the dihedral angle or you have the high wing or you have the sweep angle on the wing you will get roll stability very very efficiently now i will talk about the dutch roll the second part is very important about the dutch roll in this dutch roll is a type of aircraft motion consisting of an out of phase combination of tail waging yaw and the rocking from side to side roll it means yaw and the roll yaw roll yaw roll yaw roll means roll and yaw both will have it. so just i am showing you aircraft is flying like this it will yaw roll again yaw roll again yaw roll so like this different motion two motions yaw and roll will be combining and it will be continuing like this like this like this so this type of motion is called the dutch roll dutch roll is a type of aircraft motion consisting of an out of phase combination of tail waging yaw and rocking from side to side that the roll so yaw and roll they are combined this yaw roll coupling is one of the basic flight dynamic modes other includes forward short periods and spiral divergence this motion is normally well damped in most light aircraft though some aircrafts with well damped dutch roll modes can experience a degradation in damping as air speed decreases and altitude increases dutch roll stability can be artificially increased by the installation of a yaw damper so we can have a yaw damper a hydraulic system is in, installed so that yaw damper will try to damp out the yawing wing placed well above the center of gravity so what are the components those who are affecting the this dutch roll if the wing is above the wing is above the center of gravity if the aircraft is sweep back and it is dihedral wing tends to increase the roll restoring force and therefore increase the dutch roll tendencies this is why high wing aircraft often are slightly anhydral and transport category swept wing aircraft are equipped with yaw damper okay so dutch roll stability can be artificially increased by the installation of yaw damper wing placed well above the center of gravity sweep back and dihedral wings tends to increase the roll restoring force so this are increasing the roll restoring force and therefore increase the dutch roll tendency so if your wing is high wing sweep back dihedral which gives in fact the lateral stability they are not good for the dutch roll because they will increase the dutch roll tendency this is why high wing aircraft often are slightly anhedral and transport aircraft swept wing aircrafts are equipped with yaw damper so if it is high wing it is anhedral means its tip should be down so to, it will avoid the dutch roll of the aircraft and for the passenger aircraft we have to use the yaw damper so that whenever the aircraft is turning yaw damper will prevent the turning so we need a proper precautions to under undermine or to reduce the dutch roll effect of the aircraft otherwise it will going to be a very big disaster third mode is the spiral mode of the aircraft 
and here it is given a graveyard spiral it is very dangerous so name of this spiral mode of the aircraft is given the graveyard spiral is a type of dangerous spiral dive entered into accidentally by a pilot who is not trained or not proficient in flying in instrument meteorological condition other name for this phenomena include suicide spiral deadly spiral death spiral and vicious spiral graveyard spirals are most common at night or in poor weather condition where no horizon exists to provide visual correction for misleading inner ear cues graveyard spirals are the result of several sensory illusions in aviation which may occur in actual or simulated imc when the pilot experiences special distortion disorientation and losses awareness of the aircraft's attitude the pilot loses loses the ability to judge the orientation of the aircraft due to the brain misperception of spatial cues okay so if you can see here uh, i have given a diagram here and it is a very very dangerous situation it should not arise from anyone there are some reasons by those reasons this spiral modes and that is called the graveyard spiral modes there are some other name of this thing like suicide spiral deadly spiral and death spiral or vcs spiral so aircraft is flying here and due to some misjudgment of the pilot or the pilot is not trained and or your some sensors are not working properly that time these things may happen and here are a few things here so if you have started putting nose down in the blue color and if you are able to recover from here itself it will go again it it is a safe but if it is further it is start spiraling like this and again second spiral is started then it is very near to the ground and aircraft will crash aircraft will crash in this case second case you have made a very nose down and turn here like this again you have given some roll and again it, it has this further roll if you give aircraft will not sustain and here graveyard spiral will this is the graveyard spiral and aircraft will crash here so in both the cases it is looking very simple that it is just following this path but if pilot has misjudged and not able to cope up or the instruments are not working properly it can happen to a crash of the aircraft so the pilot should ensure that aircrafts are working properly all the systems of aircraft should work pilot should be trained before opting for night flying night flying a regular exercise is done for the pilot especially for the defense pilot every night every year a few some hours of night flying especially for a deep night during dark time when the moon is also not there pilots are flying to practice for any misjudgment so these are the three lateral and directional dynamic stability mode we have completed now all the and so how to recover how to recover from this case this is also very important that if your aircraft is facing the problem your aircraft is able to do the spiral case pilot should be able to recover the aircraft as and when aircraft is about to graveyard 
spiral. A diving aircraft has more kinetic energy, which varies as the square of the speed. You know that as an aircraft is going down, the velocity is increasing and velocity is half rho v square. The aerodynamic forces lift and drag will act as proportional to square of the velocity. That when straight and level, to get back to straight and level, the recovery must get rid of this excess energy safely. So during this diving, velocity is very high. So how to get back this high energy? The procedure is adopted here. How to recover from this high energy? The sequence is given like this. First, you have to make power all off. Make sure that engine power is off. Level the wing to the horizon. Then you try to make the wing horizontal at the horizon level. Or if horizontal has been lost, horizon has been lost to the instruments, reduce speed using gentle back pressure on the control until a desired speed is reached. So if you are not able to see the artificial horizon, or the instruments are not working properly, then what to do? Reduce the speed using a gentle back pressure on the control until a desired speed is reached. So you have to apply the control. So what are the control here? You can see here. Here we have the elevator. We have the aileron. We have the rudder. These three controls have to be used properly so that aircraft can reach to its equilibrium position without engine power. These controls have used to reduce the aircraft speed in such a way that aircraft has to come because it is going like this spiral like this. So we have to make this rudder and ailerons in such a way that aircraft should come like this in a straight and level flight like this. So your control are very much important to find that aircraft is coming to its equilibrium position. So this is the method which we have to adopt for this graveyard spiral conditions. So these are my references. I have taken from Robert C. Nelson, Aircraft Stability and Automatic Control. I have also gone through the NPTEL lectures of Aircraft Stability and Control by Professor A.K. Ghosh, IIT Kanpur. This is the link which I have given. You all can go and refer these links. I am very thankful for the NPTEL lectures and Professor Ghos for I have learned from this and I have reproduced something from this given lectures. Thank you very much for this and hope you have learned this course. This is my last topic of this course. If any queries anyone has, you are welcome to ask. I will try to reply. This is my email ID yddwivedi at the rate gmail.com. This is my email ID. You are welcome to ask the question. Hope you have learned the aircraft stability and control. I have started with longitudinal static stability, then lateral and directional static stability, then module 3 is aircraft equations of motion. In that, I have covered the 6 degree of freedom equations of motion. And after that, I have gone for the perturbed equation of motion in that different derivatives Mactuck derivatives, your control powers, different types of derivatives we have studied so that uh, the force equations and mo moment equations can be solved easily. And also in the last module, we have worked for the dynamic stability in that we have seen different modes, different equations, oscillations and other parameters which we could solve. Okay, thank you very much for joining the class. I am ending here my this lecture and also this course. This is my the last topic for this course.
course thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates